Hey guys, this is Chesney Hawks here. You are watching My Hammers 11 with the one and only Russ. Hi everybody, Russ from uh, West Ham Network. Hope you're all safe and well. If you're channel, please see the subscribing. Hitting the bell icon so you're made aware of any time we put new content on. Now we have got a very special ex Hammers, My Hammers 11. He, um, because we're doing the interview, he doesn't have to go shopping with his wife. So he's really happy. Uh, it's Matthew Rush. How are we, Matthew? Well, apart from the shopping, which you just mentioned, that I'm fantastic. Well, you've just been on holiday. I have. I just got back from Tenerife. How do you know that? Because you, because oh, we couldn't you. do it. Yeah, because you. Yeah, was... yeah, I told you that we had to cancel the last, the last appointment. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, um, I'm just got back from Tenerife, which was fantastic. Um, and I'm off to Hungary next week. Oh, my heart bleeds. Oh, my sorry. Bleeds. Some, some of us are still flying. Yeah, I'm off to Norfolk. So there we go. <laughs> hey, Norfolk's not bad. But, but Love the carrot. If you remember, I was there for nearly two years. You were. You were at Norwich, yeah. You were at Norwich yeah. for a couple of years. Yeah, no, I we, we go there every year in the caravan. We love it. Yeah, we love it. Beautiful, that. The the broads, when the weather's nice, there's no, there's no nicer place in the in the. I nearly UK. got arrested on the Norfolk Broads when I was living there because I, I, I was doing three knots instead of two knots on the, uh, on, on the canals and I got pulled over by the canal police. They told me to slow down because I was causing a wake. <laughs> Or something to, <laughs> like, but yeah. like, na like nowadays, people have got like footballers got the hundred million pound Lamborghinis doing, you know, no, no, you're on a little, uh, little, little barge around the broads. I like it near Stalham. Very good. Uh, good for those of you who don't know, some, some of the, the, the younger audience may not know who, who Matthew, Matthew is basically, but Matthew played, um, five years pro, but obviously he was a youth team and apprentice, um, in the, in the sort of up until 95, made 55 first team appearances, five goals, including an absolute belter against Ipswich Town. Uh, amazing goal. I watched it again. It just, just took me right back to that. Because that, that was my era, Matthew. That was my proper era. So I'm really happy to get you on because and unlike other footballers, you know, which we, who tend to stay in the game a little bit, don't they, whether it's on doing the, the, the ex-player yeah. nights or doing Sky Sports, you did them. You sort of you left the game almost when when you retired, really, in, in sort of a professional sense, wasn't it? It's fair to say. Yeah, um, but I kind of voluntarily ostracised myself from everything football. Yeah. Um, um, I was never an avid support. It may sound a bit odd, but I was never an avid supporter of football when I was a child. I was, I was raised by my mum. There was never any sports in the house. Yeah. We didn't watch football. We didn't watch sport of any description. Um, so sport was one of uh, football was one of those things amongst other sports, which I was relatively good at. Mm. Um, and uh, at that time, I suppose, there was a, a career pathway with football, and I followed that. Um, mm. So when I did retire, it wasn't the hardest thing in, in, uh, to like, remove myself from that environment. And mm. I had a one-and-a-half-year-old one baby at the time, uh, so I kind of redirected my emphasis and my focus on to her. Yeah, totally, totally. But I mean, and, and unlike I think a lot of other people, obviously during you know during, during towards the end of the of your sort of your your professional career, obviously you know you you went and studied sports science, you got a degree, and and again sort of you know you sort of went a different path, so to speak, away from professional football. And I think that's what that's what intrigued me about 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 you, Matthew Joyce, because it was I remember you being this sort of dynamic, like really like ferocious. Actually, in today's game, you'd have probably been an absolute revelation, really, when when pace and power are sort of so important in football now, it seems. And then just as you said, to sort of ostracize yourself voluntarily from football. It's um as you said, it's it, it doesn't tend to happen that way. So I think that's why it's almost like you're not, not an enigma, but it's like when I said, "Oh, I've got Matt, I've got Matthew Rush coming on," people were like, "Oh my God, Matthew Rush! I haven't heard of him for years." I was like, "I <laughs> <Yeah>. know." <laughs> oh, but it's funny you should use that term because uh, Harry used to refer to me as Enigma as well, um, because because I wasn't getting drunk on Tuesday and rolling into training with yeah. bloodshot eyes on on Wednesday, and I wasn't gambling and playing golf and all the other stereotypical pastimes of of professional football players at the time. So yeah, so Harry used to refer to me as the Enigma as well, but. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it worked out really well for me. The like, like you said, I did my applied sports science degree. Then I did my post grad after that, and then another year um, new, as a newly qualified teacher. So it took me five years to qualify as a teacher. Um, most people don't, don't don't realize that's how long it takes to be a teacher. They think yeah. you just roll out of uh, your A levels and start teaching for some reason. Uh, <laughs> and then during that time, 
when I started teaching, uh, my daughter started school. So that's what that's what I was trying to orchestrate that her downtime or her holidays would be my holidays. And that's what part yes. of the reason why I went into teaching. Um, because like I said, my emphasis was going to be my daughter and it, it, mm. it actually worked out incredibly well. Yeah, I can I can vouch for that being the summer holidays now and <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and I've got my nine-year-old daughter there playing playing with LOL yes. dolls while I'm talking to you. So I know exactly how you how you feel. And uh, yeah, actually, you're right, because everyone's off at the same time, so it must be yeah. lovely as well. That's absolutely perfect. Um, and you mentioned Harry, obviously, you know, in in terms of you know, sort of football was was a career path in terms of you know, you were good at sport in general, and football was it. Um, and obviously, you know, from the youth team and signing apprentice forms, it sort of made it. It's, you sort of, you know, it, it, you then became. So obviously, I think you signed your pro forms in March 1990, I think, which would have been just as Billy Bonds took over. Yeah. Um, and you know, you you were sort of set, so to speak. Was I mean, you know, was West Ham always going to be once you were in the youth team and, and apprentice and pros? Was that always going to be West Ham, or do you remember any other clubs sniffing around with you at the time? Oh no! So when when I was a uh, before I signed my youth team contract, then there was a whole rash of London clubs trying to sign me and everything else. Hmm. But I, I'd gone to West Ham. Um, I was very happy with West Ham, so I signed, like you said, my schoolboy forms and my apprenticeship, and uh, and subsequently my pro contract there. And Billy's first managerial job was when I was in the reserves, so he had that. Unfortunately, he had me with, for, for his first run out as a manager, and then he took the, the the main job. And like I said, I was incredibly happy there. I think there was a slightly different environment in clubs back then as to what they are now. Um, mm. Yes, we are commodities, but. And, and I'm sure older posts say exact mirrored exactly what I'm going to say now. Is it, it was like a, a family environment, yes. And we didn't bounce around from one club to another club, just chasing mm. a slightly bigger contract. Mm. Um, so I was part of that breed where it was a family club, and you were potentially going to stay there for the majority of your career. I mean, mm. um, back then there was a whole rash of players having testimonials for fulfilling ten years of of um, employment within the same club. I'm not entirely sure that happens anymore because people bounce mm. around so much. Yeah, you're uh, totally right. So, yeah. So, like you said, um, yeah, I had no intention of going anywhere. My, 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 not my dream, but m my passion was West Ham and, and I had no intention of leaving. When I signed pro with Bill, um, it was me signing for my football career as opposed to me signing for a contract. Yes, no, I, I that makes perfect sense. You, you're totally right. The sort of the, the 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 mechanism of a footballer now is it is about sort of doing the same job for another employee for more money, really, isn't it? Yeah. Where it was a passion, and you get that. And there's a reason why you know the the ex player nights you still get all like you know Alvin, Martin, and people like turn up because it's that sort of family atmosphere and it's that community spirit. And I totally understand it. And obviously. You know, to be fair, you know, when, when you broke into the team, I think you made your league debut that season. Um, and, and you know, as, as we said, you know, you sort of didn't really sort of get a, a whole run of games coming in. You sort of went out on loan. I think you went to Cambridge. I think you went to Swansea as well. Yeah. Was that frustrating as, as, a, as a youngster? Well, the Cambridge one was following a toe injury. Um, yeah. And I think it was quite normal for if you were injured and out, then coming back into the uh, fold, as it were, to get regain your fitness at a lower league yeah. club rather than playing in the reserves because the level yeah. would be better um, and you're playing against grown men. So that it wasn't frustrating in that respect. Swansea, that wasn't. That was me being um, farmed out on them because, I, because Harry didn't had no plan to play me in the first team. But yeah. it actually worked out really well. Uh, yeah. My time at Swansea was fantastic. I had some great games there. And on the back of that, um, I came back into the first team at West Ham, coming out of Swansea after having a good run there. Mm -hmm. And I helped Swansea to the, I believe it was called the Auto Glass Cup back then. Yes, yes. And if, if, I'm, if memory serves me well, Swansea were the first Welsh team to get to the final for that, I think. Potentially. Um, don't quote me on that one. Um, which then resulted in me going to watch Swansea at Wembley and getting a standing ovation from the stands from the Swansea Aww. fans. Which was, yeah, which was heartwarming. I mean, it's one of my highlights of my career, actually, my short Fantastic. career. Um, but like I said, my time at Swansea then put me back into the first team yeah. at um, at West Ham, and other clubs were uh, sniffing around. Like I had meetings with Newcastle and Arsenal, 
Wow. Um, as well, subsequently. Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. I, I was reading about that, and you know, as you said, you came back. I think they recalled you a bit early, wasn't they, from the Swansea yeah. loan? Then you played the last like nine or ten games of that season, and as you said, then then they offered you a three year contract in the summer. Um, and again, you know, for me, you know, being you know, from, from a, a professional perspective, you know, you've been farmed out, you came back and he said you had Newcastle and you had Arsenal sniffing around, but you stayed stayed loyal to West Ham and signed that three-year contract. Oh, I, like I said, um, from the outset, I had no intention of ever of playing anywhere else. Yeah. Um, yeah. The only reason why I entertained, I think um, it was uh, Keegan and Soon, this was at Newcastle at the time, um, and they flew down to meet me in Heathrow and had a chat with them. Um, and it was more of a professional courtesy on my part because yeah. I didn't really, I never ever wanted to leave London. And the idea of leaving West Ham and London was, uh, <laughs> was yeah. shocking. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what led me to leave ultimately was 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 uh, for other reasons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because obviously, yeah, I think in the, so that was the that was in the yeah because I think you signed the the three year contract in in the beginning in the ninety four August ninety four and then. Yeah, then you went to Norwich the following year, wasn't it? So you, you played a lot of Premier League games that season, and then and then Norwich sold bought you for three hundred and fifty thousand pounds or something like that. So um, yeah. then unfortunately, but, then you hurt your knee and. Uh, yeah. Well, I signed I signed with Bill, and Bill, Billy and I had a fantastic relationship. Um, yeah. We used to, we used to train together away from football training because his, wow. his fitness was um, was remarkable. Yeah. Uh, if, he, if he doesn't mind me saying it for a man of his age. No. Um, and my fitness levels were—I I, I like my fitness, and I still do. And I was probably one of the only guys at the club that could outrun Bill on a distance run. Um, wow! So yeah, so he, he, him and I occasionally would train together in the gym or go for a run. And I, I had a, the most respect for the, and I still do for for Billy Bonds, uh, mm. and that's who I signed my contract with. Mm. And then, as you know, dynamics change within the club. Yeah. Um, let's not go into that. Harry then took over, um, and it was made known to me that I wasn't in, in his plans yeah. in a long term perspective. So, yeah. that was the reason why. In fact, he told me that Norwich should come in and it'd probably be a good idea if I went. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, I, and... if I wanted to play, if I wanted to play 13 football, and that's what he wanted to do. Yeah. Um, cause, cause I'm, crazy competitive person and, and the idea of playing seeing out my career for another two years in the reserves and then mm. and then being well, well anything could happen out of contract i decided to after the advice from harry to take uh to take the move <laughs> yeah and it must be hard as well because obviously you from you know from the uh, you know as you said from youth team and apprentice a long time at the same place and you said you you, you know approaches before and you turned them down and da, 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 and then and then to be sort of told look that's it. You're not gonna. I don't. I don't. Don't. Don't really see you in my plans. But then, yeah. from a professional perspective, you're thinking, okay, well, fair enough. You know, it's. I can. I can. I can go to. As Norwich came in, and you had a nice couple of years at Norwich. As you said getting caught, getting caught, arrested on the broad. So a nice know, couple of years. Yeah, just not playing football. Um, not playing football, it, of course. It yeah. Took me. Crikey, I think it took me 14 months to recover from That's my crazy. ACL. Um, back there, I think the. Uh, the surgery wasn't quite up to speed as it is now. Medical advancements, what they are now, the, the recovery time is more six months as opposed to 14 yeah. months. Um, but yeah, the, the, when I had that ACL, which was, I think, on the fifth day. I think, Something like I was, third or fifth day, yeah, something like that. I think I signed on Thursday, trained on Friday, played on Saturday, Sunday off, and then got injured on Monday. <laughs> so I probably went down as the championship's worst buy of the year. <laughs> And then, I, then, then obviously, then uh, Martin left, and then two more managers came through. Not, um, and there's me sat on the medical bench. Yeah. It's not the, the most, um, the best first first impression you make to a manager. No. No, 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 not at all, not at all. And obviously, you know, we, you know, when you was at West Ham, obviously you played, you know, a lot of Premier League games as well. Because obviously we were sort of up and we were sort of up and down, up and down. We missed the first season of the Premier League, then we went back up into, and then you end up playing a few Premier League games and stuff like that. Um, you know, as you scored five goals at West Ham, as the Ipswich goal was was brilliant. Was that the, what was the best goal you've ever scored in your career? Can you remember it? Can you? Because some people can like. You know, there weren't them. that many. Yeah, so, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I mean, nice. 
Um, so um, when I was old, actually, they, they, they probably didn't have videos up north at the time, but um, the Betamax has been burnt since. <laughs> there, were, there was a couple of combination uh, runs I did with up there and, and la a similar, not that dissimilar to the, the one you were referring to, the Ipswich one, um, but obviously with a better um, lead, lead up, which, which for me were better goals. Um, yeah, yeah. I scored with my left foot at, at Tottenham and yes, normally my left foot was for standing on. <laughs> so that, 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 that was a personal highlight. <laughs> but Ipswich one, one is the one that people uh, yeah. usually refer to because, it, it, like I said, it was, yeah, it was quite an impressive goal. Yeah, it was a very but, impressive but goal. But the, the, um, probably the two headers, which were almost identical uh, against... Not in time. Who, who was Lee Power playing against at the time for, for the time? I scored. That was Norwich. It was only Lee Norwich, Powell's yeah, Norwich. it was against Norwich, yeah. Yeah, because Lee One was um, Lee was a good friend of mine. We kind of grew up through London and saw each other quite a lot. And he marked me for both those goals, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, not only did it look identical, I was marked, be marked by one of my mates. Uh, oh, so brilliant. that again, for very different reasons, it was yeah. a, another good memory in terms of goals. Yeah, and 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 back and so you know, back in the day, sounds like I'm talking years ago. It was a long time ago, but it was obviously, a long time ago. it was today. It was it's thirty years ago, wasn't it? Really <laughs> thinking about when you signed thirty one years ago. Um, God, that is a long time, isn't it? Jesus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was talking to Michael Hughes about it the other day, and 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 he was talking about some West some shirt, and that was twenty six years ago. He wore that shirt. But anyway, when you know when when you when you nowadays, you know, obviously, you know. When you retired, you obviously you had you had some sort of plan what you wanted to do and go into, you know, and, and go and go back and, and go back to university and get your degrees and stuff like that. Was that always in the back of your mind when you were playing? Because I think nowadays the money is so extortion, extortionate that people don't have to worry what's going to happen if they get if they retire because they, they've basically made their money in about two or three years for the, yeah. their life. Back then it was very different. Yeah, um, no, it was never ever a consideration of mine going into teaching or going to university. Mm. When I was playing football, you have this. Uh, all players will have a certain godlike complex. You have to, yeah, because yeah. You, you, you have pundits having to go at you, the press having to go at you, your own teammates having to go. And unless you have this 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 resolve that you're good enough and you deserve to be where you are, then you'll never yeah. survive. So yeah. we all kind of wander around with this godlike complex. Uh, so when it comes to playing, certainly at 26. As far as I was concerned, I didn't need to consider anything else because I was going. To, yeah. And because, like I said before, my fitness was at the top end of fitness levels mm. um, comparatively. I had every intention of, of being there for as long as Billy Bonds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you out, Sean, but you got past Billy, you know, by by, by a season technically. <laughs> but but you I know, think he played um, first team football when he was forty, didn't he? Forty-one, I think. Yeah, I think 41. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. He, he, like I said. He, very impressive at any time time frame yeah no it is he was an incredible incredible man and still is still is an incredible man but obviously you said you said you know back at during your time at west ham it was very much a family a community you know sort of a, a team spirit and you know looking through some of the players that you know you play i mean i know you, you still chat to a few of them um but you know it must have been particularly as a youngster coming in you know you've got like the likes of alvin martin and julian Dix and and people like that was it was you ever was it wasn't it, was it intimidating coming in when you first when you first sort of signed the pro forms and and went to training with the first team was it was there an intimidation because obviously you know you're a youngster so to speak and or was it right, right i'm going to show these guys i can i can hang with them so to speak um, it's a combination of two I mean, it is intimidating but not in a detrimental way or yeah. or, or i don't know it's these are the, the these people are doing what you want to be doing. Your your mm -hmm. youth team reserves, and you want to get into the first team. These guys are there; they're doing it, and obviously your aspirations are to do exactly the same as them. So yeah. it's a bit intimidating. And then you're obviously thrown in, and you're training with them. They've been there for a long time as senior pros, um, and they're, they're rubbing you on top of the head in that condescending way because you're the new kid. Yeah. Um, and yes, we do realise you're condescending to us. Uh, <laughs> so yes, it, it, in that regard, it, it is intimidating. But um, like I said, that fuels your passion and ambition to, sure. to achieve. Uh, and you, you use that in a, in a positive way, not in a negative way at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're not, if you're not um, intimidated ever so slightly, then I think it's kind of killing yourself somewhat. 
Yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. Because I think for some people, it, it can be quite intimidating, particularly, you know, as he came through from youth team to, you know, apprentice and reserve, you know, you, these types of people, you're like, you're in the same dressing room as them now. And I, yeah. and I think I think it might be slightly different now because, you know, the dressing rooms then were very different to how the dressing rooms are now. Um you know, as you said, you know, Harry called you the enigma because you didn't drink or or gamble or, you know, and everyone was yeah. probably doing that. Did you feel slight? And I know it's not, not, it's probably not the wrong, the wrong question, but did you feel slightly ostracized because you were not like that? No, that not from the players. Like I said, yeah. we're, a bunch of, we're a bunch of boys doing what we want to do, enjoying yeah. ourselves immensely. So, no, I never, if anything, on Wednesday, the most of the boys used to come up to me and, and say, Matt, come here. And have a deep inhalation and, and then just breathe on me, and I'd be like the like the uh, the canary down in the mines. <laughs> and, and if I went cross-eyed, they wouldn't speak to the manager. And if, I, if I didn't go cross-eyed, that means they were quite they were safe to speak to the manager. Oh, brilliant! Um, and that happened more often than you realise. I no, uh, I know. I've I've I mean, interviewed you know, him. Back then, the I've boys did like a drink. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you had uh, like Trevor Morley and Ian Bishop and a few, and, yes. and Dick. You like you mentioned the the boys like to enjoy themselves. Um, yeah. So yeah, when when Wednesday or Thursday, when, when we came back after a day break, then then I was the the team canary. Oh, I love that. Yeah, but yeah, uh, I mean, but, no, yeah like said, and like, look, but going back to what I said about the family environment, everybody, the camaraderie was fantastic. Yeah. Yes, you come to blows occasionally, and sometimes and sometimes you might fall out for thirty seconds. Yeah. But but males aren't that intelligent. The girls girls hold a grudge for for days and years and and decades. So but boys. We have a we have a blarney and then, and then we put each other into a headlock and crack on with it. Exactly, it's so true. It's so true. <laughs> being the only being the only uh, being the only male in a family of, of females, <laughs> I can attribute that to, as well, Matthew. So yes, very much so. Including the dog, including the dog. <laughs> she's still she's still half as a grudge if you haven't fed her properly. But, <laughs> no, but it's true. I remember interviewing. Um, we interviewed Trevor and Ambition. And yeah, and uh, yeah, they used to. I think Bish always used to have a pack of polos in his pocket just in case. Just no, in case he did. Frank McAvenny, my God, oh. that boy drinks like a proper Scott. <laughs> Love Macca. I was talking to him yesterday. Top man, top, top man. Right. So we'll, we'll try We'll try and, and put together some sort of team a little bit, Matt, just because, you know, people like to. Okay. So obviously you play with some great, but we can help. I can help because I know it's been 30 years. You can 30 help a lot. Years. Yeah. You can we can help, help a lot. lot. Help a lot. We can do it. Right. We'll start in goal, right? I think in goal is probably the easiest one. Am I right? Am easiest, I right? Easiest one. Let's see if we agree on this. Go on where, are you, where are you steering? I'm thinking Ludic McCloskey. The, the best goalkeeper that I've ever seen. Really? really? Yeah, he, the guy was phenomenal. And his fitness levels were phenomenal. And yeah. and the contrast between Ludo and um, Phil Parks. Yes. Yeah. When it comes to fitness levels, Not other end of the spectrum. Yeah, other, I mean, yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong, um, Parksy, the, the man could shop a, stop a rocket from 50 metres. I mean, <laughs> he would literally just put his body in the way and stop everything. Um, yeah. But Ludo, the athleticism of the guy was was awesome. And his yeah. distribution was fantastic. I would literally put the, my, my heels on the chalk and the boy would just throw me the ball to my feet and then say, go on, get on with it. So, yeah, yeah Ludo was and a super nice guy. And, and he was one of the kind of the the early... European migration yes. into the Premiership. He kind mm -hmm. of spearheaded it for a lot of other people, um, but he was such a nice guy and such a good player that um, yeah, he's, I think he smoothed the way for a lot of people. Definitely. So yeah, nothing but nothing but accolades for Ludo. No, we love Ludo. We love Ludo. I could, I could. Yeah. Right, okay. We'll, we'll try and get the easy ones out of the way. Left back again, Dixie, <laughs> and 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 to reiterate, chalk on the hills. He's on yeah. my side, I'm on the other side, and he would just bang one 40 meters and he would say, Would you like to go on my right foot or left foot? And he would just stick it there. <laughs> he, again, it. again. And as, as a winger, you are kind of somewhat reliant on other people's distribution. Of course, yeah. So so when you have a play like that, then when the field is drifting over, you can drift in the opposite direction, yeah. knowing that you are going to be involved in the game. Mm -hmm. And Dixie's well, we all know his left foot was phenomenal. Yeah, fantastic player. Lo lovely bloke as well. Likes to drink as well, but you know. Who didn't then? Uh, right, okay. We'll put Julian and the Julian. The, okay, let's go. Okay, right back. Right, let's go right back. Okay, as yeah. a, as a wing, as a as a as a right sort of more of a right sided winger as well, Matt. You know, it's like. So okay. I started my career as a as a fullback. Yeah. Um, but because, uh, 
so all, for most of my junior career as a Uton player and everything else, I was a right back, and but I'd get the ball and then I'd run past people and end up going past a winger and delivering the ball. And that's when they said, kind of said, well, if you're going to do that, you may as well be a winger <laughs> because the winger doesn't want to defend. Um, so we'll have to get someone else in to be a fullback and you can be a winger. So, I, I mean, I think the best position on the, on the field is a fullback, left back or right back, because you can yeah. see the entire pitch in front of you. Yeah. Um, and, and some morons not going to run up behind you and take you out of the knees. Uh, but yes, but I played all my pro career as a winger. Um, but as a, who would have as a right back? Now you're going to help because I'm right. not going to say Tim Breaker. Oh. Before you nope. go there. Okay. Okay. Steve Potts? Um, Potsy for me was, was, I preferred playing with Potsy. Um, somewhat more intelligent. Uh, yep. Break Break was a bit more of a brute. He's physically more pre uh, uses physicality a lot more than Potsy. Yeah. Potsy was was by, by any stretch of the imagination a relatively small player. Oh, you buggered off. Your cameras died. Don't worry, I'm back. I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> I'm back. And, you're back and you're back again. You're back in the room. And you're and you're, and you're called on my screen. You're called Julian Dix. Just thought I'd tell you. Yeah. Yes, me, Julian Dix. Yeah, 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 yeah. The years have not been kind. And I thought I was the only uh, technical dinosaur in, in Chelsea at the moment. <laughs> well, I'm in Orn Church, so you are in Chelsea. I'm in Orn Church. There we go. <laughs> right. Yeah, so so I'm, I'm actually currently at uh, Duke of York Square. Oh, lovely. Because I, I, I live at the um, I live opposite Stamford Bridge, just a short walk down for me. Oh, lovely. Um, lovely yeah. So um, of the of those two, then I'd probably go with Potsy. Yeah. Lovely, lovely man as well. Potsy is, isn't oh, he? Yeah, I mean, honest, very honest. But if you look at the, the if, sorry, if you look at the team back there, there were a few players, which were, I mean, uh, Potsy, uh, Slater, yeah, uh, Kevin Keane. These got these guys. They they weren't massive personalities, but the most genuine no. and for football players, the most genuine, nice people you'll ever come across. Yeah, no, I totally and they never had any airs and graces. They're always super, um, really. Uh, it's not comforting, but uh, supportive. Mm, yeah, uh, and and it's not surprising, like you mentioned, like people like Kevin Keane and Steve Potts, and the fact that they're still involved in the club in a coaching capacity as well. You know, because of that that nature, that nurturing nature. You know, with with the under twenty threes, under eighteens, it's yeah. almost like they're sort of imparting that into the next generation. So there's there's no coincidence there, I don't think. But uh, yeah, I, I imagine they're kind of the people that you want working for you as well yeah of course you don't really want a, someone with a super inflated ego which is going to be a pain in the backside every five minutes you want someone going to be a team player who's going to be supportive and everything else and those guys are um inherently or naturally that way yeah exactly okay so we put potsy in right center halves right okay quite okay alvin. i think alvin i can say put alvin in i was uh, yeah. i saw alvin the other day as well um right alvin's in he was such an intelligent player because yes. he wasn't the, he, he wasn't the fastest and he, he, I think he'll put, hold his hands up and say, I'm not the fastest player. But yeah. his, the way that he could read and anticipate a game, he would literally put himself in the position he needed to be long before anybody even thought about it. Mm. So mm. he didn't need to be fast because yeah. he was already there. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And he was uh, coming up through um, as a youth team player and coming through. He was really uh, supportive as well. I can imagine. Yeah. Because, I mean, he, he, came for, you know, he came from the age of 16 down... You know, down from from Liverpool and and, yeah. and stayed here. You know, and so yeah. you know, it's incredible. And obviously, double testimonial years for him as well. Okay, so we put Alvin Martin in. Okay, partnering him. Okay, right. I'm trying to think. Tony Gale. Um, so, so, so Gale, Gale used to pick me up when I, before I could drive. Yeah, um, he used to drive past where I, when I, I think I was living with my mum at the time, and then again when I moved. It was kind of on route for him. So he used to pick me up before I could drive. I was a late driver. I didn't start driving until 19. <laughs> um, and yeah, bless him. He used to pick me up uh, on the way through to training in the morning. Oh, I love him. Such a nice but, What games. other options are there? Um, Colin Foster. You might have, you probably Fuzzy. play with Colin. Fuzzy. With Fuzzy. Yeah. yeah. Have you got anybody that's not slow? <laughs> I'm, not sure, um, I'm not sure we can have two buses. I'm trying out. to think. M M did Mitchell Thomas play? No, he was more of a left back, wasn't he? Oh, he was, Mitch. Bloody Mitch. hell. Um, we are, you know. Um, <laughs> Mitch, uh, we, there, we, there, there, there's a personality. <laughs> Mitch was funny. God, God, I haven't thought about these names for such a long time. That's but what yeah, I mean. Mitch, it's lovely. He was a character. 
yeah. He was, he was definitely not um, uh, backward at coming forward. No, 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 no. Uh, I'd say we could put, we could have put like someone like he could have moved Potts into centre back and put Kenny Brown in right back or someone like that as well. But um, yeah, I think probably Gailey and Colin Foster are probably, and Fozzy are probably the, the two I'd suggest. But um, okay, well, I, I've got to say Gailey because he gave you me. You got to put the chauffeur in. <laughs> You've got to include the staff occasionally. <laughs> exactly. Just a little, just a little, a little bit occasionally, Matthew. Just so you know, just to give him a little bit of, you know, recognition once in a while. But uh, unsurprisingly, Gailey put himself in. He's he's my hammers eleven. He put Did it he? in. He put himself in as captain, um, uh, manager, <laughs> first team coach, penalties and free kicks. So yeah. He obviously left out in charge of the of the poker in the back of the bus. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but, he, yeah. Was, he was he was dealer at the back of the bus. Oh, was he the dealer um, when they're playing poker? Yeah. They, they, they lost the packet and they won a packet. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's so funny, mate. I, I love listening to this. That's the thing. I don't think, particularly in modern football, you don't get those stories like these sort of, you know, uh, dressing room stories, that this sort of banter that you would do, it seemed in the night. Football cha football's changed in terms of money, in my opinion. I yeah. think you, you lose a little personality. And it makes sense because obviously, you know, one dodgy tweet or one dodgy post and the players lost millions in is sponsorship and stuff so they have to yeah. be i mean that was a bit professional back then there was there was no iphone around so no no <laughs> so you, you could you could misbehave um yes. but like i said we, there was never anything malicious or no. or in, in in that vein it was just boy banter and us being stupid yeah um, like like setting fire to the back of the bus on our christmas night out <laughs> i love the way you just drop that in as if it's like no yeah, yeah, yeah like, we, we committed arson <laughs> I love it. Oh, so fun. right. Okay, let's move into midfield because, uh, cause, you know, cause I know you want to go back shopping soon. So, right. Okay. Oh, no, no, you take your time. <laughs> right. Let's go. Let's go left wing. Left wing. Right. Okay. Let's think. Left wing. Stewie. Does slates. Stewie yeah. Yeah. He he puts, yeah. He puts slates in. Yeah. He puts slates in. I love slates. Lovely guy. I really mean, sweet. He could have done with putting a few pounds on. And I think that yes. helps the game immensely because yeah. he's getting ragdolled quite a lot. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, Stuart Slater. Yeah, lovely and guy. He's, like I said, a super, super nice guy. He, but I'm so, but he said, I know like a broken record, but everyone I've spoken to from sort of your ear, or actually, to be honest, any ex player, none of them, none of them have been horrible. They're all lovely, just blokes and. And it's just, and I mean, Slate's, you know, I think Slate still lives with his mum, bless him, moved in with his mum um, during COVID. And, and you know, I, mean, so, I love him. He's so sweet. But right, we'll put Slate's in. Okay. Now, now, his, his decision, Matthew, is you can put yourself in right wing, get those yeah. appearances back up. Get one more appearance. One more. <laughs> who, but who else is there? Kevin Keane. Keno, yeah. You put Keno in. Um, Matty Matt Holmes. Watch. Who? Matty Holmes. No. Um, way too slow. Way too slow. Hughes, uh, Matt, you Michael Hughes. Michael Hughes. Michael Hughes. Too slow. Too slow. There we go, Hughesy. You're too slow. Um, um I'm trying to think, who else would have played? Okay, it, I could have gone with Kevin Keane, but seeing as I was fast and all of them, we're going to have some speed on the team. You need some speed. Let's we need some speed. Rush in. Especially yeah, the we need some speed. <laughs> it's, that's that's what I mean. It's like looking looking back at watching your highlights when you used to play. It's like now in today's game where it's literally all about pace, 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 and power. Yeah. You would have ready made, ready made winger and, and a proper winger. You know, on a, you know, if you're right sided, you go on the right side. Don't do this. Oh, it winds me up. Yeah, with no, modern football. No. Not that in for that right. rubbish. Oh. So let's have a proper on his to God chalk chalk on the hills winger. <laughs> that's what you need. That's what you need. Big man, little man up front. That's it. It's so simple football. Um, right, okay. So we put Matthew Rush. I've heard of him. He's, he was quite good. Um, right, we'll put him in. Uh, right, central midfielders. Okay. Uh, right. Interesting. It's going, to, it's going to start getting tough now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, again, because I was a winger and distribution is everything, it's got yeah. to be... Um, uh, see... Now the name's Bishop. It's got to be Bish. Bish. I was going to say, say Bish, but it was well, his here, distribution yeah. was phenomenal. Again, yeah. um, they, I, I sound like a broken record distribution, distribution. But like I said, That's when key. you're when you're winger, it is key. Otherwise, you just mm. drift around and not get involved. Um, you create space, and then you're reliant on people to feed you into that space. Mm. Uh, so yeah, Bish. 
Bish, and, and, by, and by the way, um, I'm sure Bish won't mind me telling you. Um, Bishop, a uh, little story. Billy Bonds asked Ian, um, and this and this uh, comes down to the respect that the players had for Bill. Bill asked him to stop drinking. Yeah. Because Bishop was a bit of a heavy drinker. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, um, yeah. And 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 that's that's. I'm I'm not telling you any stories here. It's quite well yeah. documented. We know. <laughs> And he, he, because of the respect that he had for Bill, he stopped drinking. And it was wow. incredibly hard for him. The boy had withdrawal symptoms <laughs> like he would have been. <laughs> but it was actually detrimental to his game. His, uh, if you, if you, you probably don't, I can't uh, so think of the, the, the time span when, when it actually happened. But he stopped drinking. And you yeah. noticed we saw his game drop off as well. Wow. Um, uh, and he did it for a period of time because Bill and Phil had asked him and uh, everything else. And his game actually returned back to form again when he started drinking. Not excessively, but <laughs> at a social level. Um, it's like a darts player, isn't it? It's like yeah. darts players. They have, to, they have to drink four or five pints to steady their hand. But, uh, yeah, but, 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 but uh, all, all people are well, conditioned, aren't we? And if that's your, yeah. part of your conditioning, you get up mm. and train on the, in the evening, you have a drink. If that's mm. your conditioning over many, many years, you, mm. you take take that away, and it will have an impact on your your psychosis, your mentality, totally. your physical le um, levels, lots of things. Um, <laughs> but bless him, he did try. Uh, <laughs> it was nice not having to smell his breath on a Wednesday for a few weeks. <laughs> a few weeks, <laughs> guys, you'd be over the late limit smelling his breath. Right, okay, we'll put Bish in. Okay, yeah. so then, so the second spot. Um, okay, let's think. Um, Pete Butler. No, no, not Butsy. Butler, Butler, Butler was a Jack Russell. He used to tear around, hit, kicking people. Yeah, um, yeah. But no. Okay. Um, who would you play with? Uh, Mike Marsh. You'd have played with. Yeah. Or Marshy. Marshy. Who else would you play with? He was a scouser, wasn't he? Marshy. He was a yeah. He was a scouser. Yeah, he used uh, to play with a translator. <laughs> Georgie Paris. He he played centre mid for a while. Bless you. He was a he was a, he was. A, he was a, Lovely guy. So, for me, so I, don't, I don't have heroes, but one of the most, most inspirational things I ever saw was from George Paris. Yeah. Who, who again, amazing guy. Drank a bit too much, but an amazing guy. Um, there used to be a little bit of racial tension in the terrace, just a little bit. Oh, on the yeah, terrace yeah, yeah. West Ham. You may be aware of that back in the yeah. 80s. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, George was one of the few. There weren't many black players at, no. at that time. And this is when I was 13, no, 14. But I was probably 14 or 15 at the time, watching from the, from the stands, and George was playing. And uh, there was the usual chants and noise and stuff. And then one yeah. guy threw a banana on the pitch at George. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but I remember it distinctly. So George has obviously seen the banana, and it, it, uh, a, chant, a shout followed from the, from yeah. the Neanderthal in the crowd. And George, bless him, and he was quite courtly. He wasn't the fittest man in the planet, but he gave he gave a hundred percent every single he game, did. which is what which is what endeared him to the crowd in the first place. Yeah. That you knew he was trying his, his damnedest a little bit. Yeah. Um, he walked over to the banana, he peeled the bloody thing, ate it, and then took it back to the guy and said, "Thank you very much. I needed that." <laughs> and that was the last time that he got any racial abuse from the crowd. Amazing. That one, well, that one action alone almost yeah. removed chanting and, and derogatory comments made towards players players of colour that just by him but you can imagine just someone else would have picked it up thrown it or whatever. yeah and it would have proper, intensified yeah proper drama queen over the whole thing and he just just flipped on his head and the but guy had seemed... nowhere to go and the everybody saw it, a lot of people saw it and that was the last time I ever heard anything directed toward him negatively it was Amazing. Most, and, yeah and that, that has stayed with me um my entire life and the way he dealt with it it's fantastic incredible incredible but i'm still not putting him in <laughs> <laughs> but despite that despite that he's not in <laughs> he's not in sorry Chris. right he's out okay who else i'm trying to think who else you'd have played with um right okay yeah we've said yeah you might, you might, mm, John Monk -er? Monk? yeah did you play with john was you yeah, played with yeah it would have been yeah i mean monks yeah amazing what a lovely but, what a, unfortunately it's not the strongest midfielder in terms of physicality they're not gonna, they're not gonna run around but but they they people. but both of them together i remember interviewing monks a while ago and he said you know there was a there was a period with me and bish in the middle where we we fancied ourselves against anyone against Vieira, <laughs> against keen we'd have 
double teamed them and stuff. And yeah, no, I no. Of, oh. physically they'd have lost every battle on the pitch. Yeah. But yeah. technically, technically yeah. they'd have won most battles on the pitch. And again, an old record um, flipping on the game. John's uh, distribution was 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 incredible. The guy yeah. had good feet, very good yeah, feet. Incredible player. I mean, he's... So I'm, no, I'm, I'm going to put the weakest but most technical uh, midfield in. No, I see it. I see it. No, I see it. And, and I mean, yeah, Monk. I, mean, I think people forget with Monk, Monk particularly because his his career, when he got slightly towards the end of his West Ham career, became a bit of, you know, he liked to tackle. He liked to put, you know, he's always got a yellow card in him, and everyone took the Mickey out because you know they, he'd be a sub and they'd count the oh, seconds yeah. until he got a yellow card. People forget, you know, he was a fantastic gifted player, and he was so technically gifted. And you know, I mean, Glenn Hoddle when he went to, obviously he had him at Swindon. He wanted him at Chelsea when he moved to Chelsea, and so Monks chose West Ham rather than than, yeah. uh, than che- signed on the same day as Jerry Beecham. Do you remember Jerry Joe Beecham? Beecham. <laughs> He's not going in either. He's not in. Oh, he's not in. Oh, he's not in. Okay. But, um, <laughs> 53 days. But, uh, Here we go. But no, Monk, Monk had a bit of the anger man syndrome. Yeah. Uh, so I, I nearly said small man syndrome. I meant anger man syndrome. Anger man syndrome. So, so when, he, when he got to his, his, his red phase, then that's when he got booked. Yes. He was. And that normally, was normally as a consequence of him getting pushed off the ball by someone a bit bigger than him. Yeah. And he was no, a he, nice guy. And he always had a really baggy shirt on. You know, he's. I mean, I mean, shirts were shirts were really big. That they're, they're, they're not like his tight fit. Yeah. They were long, and Monk's always had it untucked. So he just looks so, so messy as a footballer. Do you know what I mean? It's like long out. Oh, I just did crazy. Right, okay, we will put Monk's in. Let's go up front then. Who's going to be your first striker then, Matthew? Okay, um, purely for entertainment value. Yep. The man with the teeth. Come on, who's this? The man with the teeth. Come on. Oh, he a great, a great set of dentures. A lot of people have good teeth. Uh, I, I, gone in, I, I don't know. Mac. Oh, Frankie Mac. Sorry, Mac. I spoke to him yesterday as well. Oh, I have to text <laughs> him. I text him. You're in, Frankie Mac. Yes. Oh, yeah. The teeth makes sense now. Oh, bless him. Yeah, yeah. The boy was what smiling all the time. Smiling yeah. all the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he was. Um, he, what a real personality. Yeah. Um, always laughing. Always laughing for what? For whatever reason, why he was laughing. I'm not entirely sure why. Can't stand uh, him. So. Let's just say he could have a really could have a glowing personality. Yeah, <laughs> and he's uh, yeah, and he's still obviously revered by West Ham fans now. You know, and yeah. and uh, yeah, top lovely, lovely boy, and he's a very, 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 very genuine person. You know, he'll do anything for you. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I know like firsthand, lovely man. Um, right, put Frankie Mac in. Um, so one spot left. Right now, so, you're gonna have to throw some names at me. So, who are we no. going? We're gonna go, we're gonna go Morley. No, no, gonna... I've got to go to, I've got to go. I, I was, I was gonna ask him some names, but um, the West Ham legend Tony Cotty, oh, got to, <laughs> yeah, TC, yeah, got but TC, and there we go. He had bigger yeah. legs than I had. <laughs> <laughs> TC had some thighs, Bloody yeah. hell. and he was rapid as well. And as and as a winger, that must be great because you think you yeah. know with, with those two up front, if you play with both of them up front, you know Maka can he's got a bit of height on him. He, he likes to he likes to header, and so you can take to the byline, or you can, you know, Cotty running off him, and, and you know if, as a winger you've got options there, haven't you? There's you know, yeah. if you, we look at his team more more sort of you know as it was if it was playing, you know, you, there's options for the winger in terms of that. And well, I tell you what, considering considering you you know it was, it was 30 years ago and you can't remember most of the players, we we've, we've done a good squad. <coughs> We've done a good team. Where is it? Let me show you. Let me show you. Where is it? Let me share oh, the screen. Sorry, sorry about that. I think the coach sorry, be... Oh, God, hopefully not. Um, that ain't a bad team, Matthew, to be honest. That's a really good, good team. I like that. I like That's, that. That's very bad. good. That's very good. That's very good. Matthew, it's been an absolute pleasure. Honestly, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed chatting to you. Awesome. It's, it's been really refreshing to hear from you, man. And I'm I'm really glad that everything's that everything's going well and the family are well and you know and life's well and stuff like that because it's uh, it's lovely to hear from you, man. It really, really <coughs> hey, is. I'm, I'm Apart from the cough. So, I'm, yeah, I don't want I, I COVID in, in February. Oh, uh, did you? So, okay. So that, that's just something I ate earlier. But the um but yeah, I'm currently on six weeks' holidays, so <laughs> What could, I know. what could be wrong with that? What could be wrong? And and it's and it's sunny for once. And it's sunny oh, for once. Sure. It's been I know. Easter. I know. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Ridiculous. We went. To, I went to London last week. We did like London as a tourist for like three or four days, and like stayed up around Tower Hill. And it's sort of like you had to sort of dodge the rain clouds. It was yeah, 
but um hopefully hopefully get a nice hopefully hungry will be lovely for you and norfolk will be lovely for me um, so the um so, when i get there the, the temperature drops to 30. oh my oh, just, what you're supposed to do in 30 degrees other than get hot and sweaty I have no unbelievable idea. unbelievable unbelievable we've i've only been in my pool to, like when those put up pools i've only been it twice all summer it's ridiculous it's not raining but anyway <laughs> for myself and for matthew take care everyone stay safe wash those hands get those jab appointments come on your irons and i'll speak to you guys very very soon thank you very much Cheers, everyone.